determines a, a successful pastor and, and what determines a successful Christ follower. And uh, so there's a lot of things to help unpack that. N number one, I, I do want to share this. Our next uh, series starting next week is Rethinking Church. And so uh, when we do church, a lot of times we get caught up on the building, the places, the people, the personalities, and we forsake the purpose, which is to make disciples. And so we're going to look at that uh, starting next week. Um, and so then I was thinking, what, 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 does, what defines success as a church? Uh, is it numbers? Is it conversions? Is it baptisms? Is it uh, properties? Is it, is it buildings? And I believe that none of those things determine success. What determines success is having a peaceful heart. And so we go through life sometimes, and, and it's difficult because we walk through pain. We walk through difficult circumstances. We walk through tragedies and celebrations and birthdays and so on and so forth. And while we're doing that, we also, you know, carry our own luggage and our own pain and our own heartaches. And so the, 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 a person can say, a Christ follower can say, is after several years, we've not grown bitter, we've not grown callous, we've not grown cold, but instead we have a peaceful and a restful heart towards God and toward others. Second Corinthians uh, chapter 13 verse 11 says this, Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. This right here, these candles represent the presence of the Holy Spirit. And as we come here today, we are reminded that we are not here as some social event. This is not just a great uh, oratory event that Grant's about to deliver or a great singing performance that Amanda's about to sing and Wendy as well. No, this is worship. This is where our hearts are protected, where our hearts abide and rest in Jesus Christ, who is the King of glory and the Prince of peace. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. Have your way in our hearts, in our lives, and in this service. We're so thankful, Lord, uh, that you have kept us together, that you are here with us. You don't leave us or abandon us. We thank you for friends that have come home. We thank you for visitors that are passing by, Lord, and we just thank you for your goodness and for your faithfulness. Lord, we worship you. Have your way here this morning. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Won't you stand to your feet and let's worship Jesus. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. How I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. the 
us far and grace will lead me Bright shining as the sun. Oh, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. Christ our Lord, oh, worship him, Christ our Lord. Let us lift up holy hands, magnify his name, and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands, magnify his name, and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands, magnify his name, and worship Christ our Lord. He's Christ our Lord. Let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on Him and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on Him. And worship him and let's forget about ourselves concentrate on him and worship Christ our Lord oh worship him Christ our Lord All we have is yours. We're gathered in your name to worship you. Jesus, all we have is yours. We're gathered in your name to worship you. Jesus, all we have is yours. you our Lord oh let's worship him cause he's Christ our Lord oh let us worship him Christ our Lord
forgiven because you were forsaken and I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again sing I'm forgiven Yes, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. Oh, and I'm accepted. You were condemned. See, I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. You, my King, would die for me. Yeah. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. Yes, it is in all I do to honor you. joy to honor you oh, in all I do to honor you sing you are my king Jesus you you are my king oh you you are my king oh Praying God come and turn this thing around. God turn it around. God turn it around. God turn it around. I'm calling on his name. That changes everything. God turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthroughs will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. I'm praying God comes and turns this thing around. 
God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm calling on his name that changes everything. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. And all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. And breakthroughs will come, come in his name, the name of Jesus. God, turn it around. 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 He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now, right now. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now, right now. He is healing someone. He is doing something. God is doing something right now, right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now, right now. Make a way something. Right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making way for someone. God is doing something right now. My me is moving, making way for someone. God is doing something right now, right now. In the name, the name of Jesus, break things will come. Come in the name, the name of Jesus. All of my hope is in the name the name of jesus breakthroughs will come come in the name the name of jesus god turn it around turn it around oh god turn it around Good morning, everybody. All right, so I got to open this up. Uh, for that Kentucky game last night, um, listen, I feel kind of partly to blame because I already had a plan. When Kentucky did win, it was going to be up there. <laughs> Rub it in the face, but guess what? It didn't happen like that. I know it. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. It still hurt. It still hurt. <clears throat> All right. Uh, if you would bow your heads, let's pray real quick. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for allowing us to be in your presence today. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be in your house. Lord, thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day. Lord, uh, I just ask to... Uh, with you, just bless us, uh, bless us with your presence. Bless us uh, in this atmosphere, Lord. And just guide and direct me as we go through your word. And allow me to be truthful to your word and uh, bold in your word. And all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Faith without works is dead. Uh, we're going to be reading out of the book of James, chapter 2. And it'll be through 14 through 26. Uh, going into this, I looked at it whenever, uh, I, I, one of my favorite hobbies is diving deep in scripture today. I like fishing, I like golfing, and I also like going down rabbit holes in the, into scripture. And this is one where it's like I tried to throw away what I had preconceived or any preconceived notions about what I think and read it anew. 
And uh, this one, over the last couple of weeks, I've went all over the place with it. But uh, Scripture doesn't contradict itself. So verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and, one's, uh, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled. Without giving them the things they needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, it does, if it does not have works, is dead. But some will say, you have faith, I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe, in God, you believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? Do you see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works? And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and was counted to him as righteous, righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way was, was not also Rahab, the prostitute, justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. For the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. All right. Now... Whenever I pick this thing, I, I also notice that uh, I pick some topics that kind of are big ones. And uh, faith without works is dead has been a very divisive topic. There's two categories that you could go with this. Uh, there's one category, so, uh, one group has taken this as faith is not enough for me to be saved. And then I need works also for my salvation. And then there's another group that I, I fall into, and Scripture clearly says, by faith alone, through grace, we are saved. But before we get into this, uh, in verse 14 it says, What good is it, my brothers, if someone has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? I think before we get into this, what is faith? Now, I've heard a couple of analogies uh, one of, my, one of the funny ones I've heard is faith is like calories. You don't see them, but the effects are real. Uh, another, uh, uh, when I think about faith, uh, so Brother Matt back there, I think, knows this church, like the, the nuts and bolts of this church, like the building itself, better than anyone in here. And I would, I would say I have faith and what Matt tells me. So if Matt told me, hey Grant, when we fill this baptistry up, this wall might just come out. I looked underneath it, and there's some supports out of there, and I, I don't have faith in this wall. How much faith would I have in Matt if I did the whole sermon standing right here? My faith is dead in what he says. So I have no faith. Now, if I have faith, I'd be sitting back here with a pair of muck boots on, ready for water to go. I think the best definition of faith comes from Hebrews uh, chapter 11. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, but the conviction of things not seen. For by it, people of old received their commendations. By faith, we understand that the universe is created by the word of God, so that when... It, what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So that's faith. Now what are works? Now, one thing to keep in mind is James, uh, he, he, he grew up in a Jewish household, so works would have been, or could have, you could take it as Mosaic law. So that would be one form of works. Um, there's six, over 600 laws in the Old Testament alone. There, you know, the Ten Commandments. That would be works. But today, we live under a new commandment. 
To love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. To love thy neighbor. That would be a work. Um, Also in John chapter 6. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in whom he has sent. Works that can be a a person's actions or deeds. Works is what we do for some return. Uh, I work for a living. And I work for a paycheck at the end of that week. I put in my work and there is the return. Even in, uh, even if I do volunteer work, I might not be getting a paycheck, but I get something out of that. The works we do here are spiritual, for spiritual return. In this context, uh, even volunteer work, uh, work refers to good deeds. We could be the feet of Jesus, especially... Uh, with religious acts, charitable acts, or observation of the New Old Testament. Now, here's where it gets tricky, okay? By faith alone through grace we are saved. Works are required for salvation. But the kicker is, is they're not works done by us. They're all works that were done by Jesus Christ. So, Scripture is very clear. Jesus fulfilled the law. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come to abolish them, but fuf- or I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Matthew five seventeen. Jesus justifies us. So then, the law, our guardian, until Christ came, in order that we may be justified by faith. Galatians three twenty four. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross reconciled us to God. Since therefore We have now been justified by his blood. Much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if for for a while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more now we are reconciled. Shall we be saved by his life? Romans 5, 10, and 11. As as he died, he proclaimed his work was done. John 19, 30. When Jesus received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the spirit. Now we are invited to enter God's rest, Hebrews 4.10. For whoever entered God's rest has also rested from his works, as God did, uh, get, God did from his. So, all those works that Jesus did for our salvation, that we do not, we do not play a part in those works, now gets us to Ephesians 2, 8 and 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And it is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, it's a biblical thing. The Martin Luther was not a big fan of the book of James and, and works. He, he considered this book like straw. He said it should be taken out of the Bible and burnt. Now, I'll read a quote later that I think could straight up represent this entire, ver- or this entire book, but um, verses 15, and six, or 15 through 17, if a brother is, or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled. Without giving them the things that they needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Faith that that does not save us is any good. And I'm not talking about like faith little f. I'm talking about faith capital F. I'm talking about true saving faith. Whenever we have faith... Uh, all things should be considered in our life profitable or unprofitable. And when we're talking about God, is this profitable for our salvation or is this unprofitable for our salvation? Do they tend to advance us towards Christ or do they hinder us from Christ? 
To say one has faith and actually, actually have true faith are two different things. Faith is actions and it's not just words. Verse 18, but some will say, you have faith. I, I'm, every time I get up here, I start doing this and then I, I broke, I think I broke two microphones while I've been up here. But all right, so verse 18, some will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Okay, so I'll go ahead and tell you, find an example of faith without works. Uh, you could easily go to the wedding banquet. Uh, parable of the wedding banquet. King's son's having a wedding. They're going to throw him a banquet. So he goes, and he, and, uh, he has slaves go out and invite all these people, and they're like, I, I don't want to come. So they don't. And then he sends out some more people. And then finally, he gets to the point and he said, I want you to go to the outer walls, to the outer side of the city, and invite everyone, good and evil. You know, I want everyone. So all these people come. Now the, now the king had provided clothing for this wedding banquet. So when they come, all they have to do is show up. The, the clothing will be provided. He comes out and he sees someone, and they're not we wearing the gown. Now, they did not have true faith in that king. They did not say, he, I'm going to be obedient to him. But they definitely did not have works because they did not put the gown on. That's an example of, of faith with no works. Uh, the, faith, the, the works can prove the faith. Now, works without faith. Now, that one... Jesus, James was a Jewish person, so you could say he had the faith or the works of the Old Testament law, but he did not follow Jesus. I'm not talking about James. That is an example of works without faith. But then there is John 14, 6 and 7. Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So when it's talking about just doing the old law, we're under a new covenant, and Jesus is the way. But a New Testament example of works without faith is, is Matthew 7, 21, 23. Now everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven, on that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. See, all the, they had the works, but they didn't have the relationship. They didn't know God. They, Jesus didn't know them. So in verse 19, and it says, this is the verse that uh, really made me think this week. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Started thinking about that one. And, and I even asked Jason, I was like, man, this demons theology, I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, demons theology, like... Every time that uh, the devil interacts with Jesus or any time it's, it's a demon, they know exactly who Jesus is. Like there is no uh, confusion there. And they respect his authority. But they just don't know about the Savior. You know, it, it, the, they don't know. But when I go to Acts chapter 19, there's a story about the sons of Sceva. And it's like they're trying to profit off the miracles that's been happening. So they see and then they go and they're going to start, they're going to start these exorcisms in the name of Jesus. And that backfires on them greatly. Because they've seen the miracles and they think that they can just capitalize on it. But they never knew Jesus. In Acts 19.15, the evil spirit answered them. They said, Jesus, I know... Paul, I recognize, but who are you? Now, they got owned that day. 
because they did not they did not follow Jesus. They had works, but they absolutely had no faith. And that did not end well with them. Verses 20 through 24. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that a faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and he was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not faith alone. Abraham had true believing power. He truly believed. But what's amazing to me is when you go from... It's 35 years from Genesis 12 being called righteousness. 35 years later, he still has true saving faith to offer his son on the altar. It's, it's not a one-day thing. It's not an instant thing. That's perseverance of faith. True faith is not just understanding. It is also the work of a whole heart. Justifying faith cannot be without works. Abraham believed, he believed God and he was counted righteous. And verse 24 tells us we are justified by works, not by our opinion or profession of faith or believing without obeying, but having true faith produces good works. To, not, to deny own reason, afflictions, and interest is an action. To fit and to try a believer. The wonderful power of faith is changing sinners. Good works don't come from us. And Titus, it tells us that those good works, like Liz, uh, like Liz said, the good work that love comes from God. That is a gift from God. Verse 25 and 26. And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. The providence of God led those two spies to the house of Rahab. When they were going there, they did not know anyone. So every single person there was an enemy. It their despised the knowledge. But God knew, I have one person inside those walls. Now, God knew where, where there was one that would uh, be true to them. Though they did not know it, it was by faith that Rahab received these two with peace. Her, whole, her king and all of her country is at war with these people. By faith, she went away from the fear of man and went towards God's people to protect them. She was a true believer and she had faith. Whenever we get to the... When you get to the crux of, of, of faith without works is dead, when you think about works... I'm not going to lie, I used to wear a, like a necklace and it was a cross. And when I first started wearing it, it was, hey, I need to remember, it was a reminder for me to pick up my cross and carry it. I wear these, neck, or these bracelets, and I have to change them every now and then, but it's a daily reminder for me. And uh, sometimes it's, I am second, Jesus is first. Uh, sometimes it's just a, a specific verse that I want on my head. But the problem with that is, is I'm not going to lie, I have that cross necklace on, and I can say, look, look at me, I, I'm a Christian, look, look at the necklace I'm wearing. And it's not the fruit that I bear, don't look at that, it's, it's the necklace. Getting away from that, but the problem is, God don't care about no necklace, no bracelet or nothing, and he can see straight through it. A healthy tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a diseased fr uh, tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. That's Matthew 7. What is works? 
You should love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. We love as Jesus did. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves are eagerly waited for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcised nor uncircumcised counts for anything, but only faith working through love. I opened, whenever I was talking, I was talking about Martin Luther saying that the book of James was like straw and should be removed from the Bible. Now, reading Faith Without Works is Dead, the reading that I read, this could have been my sermon, and I could have made it a whole lot shorter, and we definitely would have beat the Baptist to Colton's. But this is Martin Luther's preface to Romans. Faith is a work of God in us, which changes us and brings us to a birth anew from God. It kills the old Adam, makes us completely different people in heart, mind, senses, and in all powers, and brings the Holy Spirit with it. What a living, creative, active, powerful thing is faith. It is possible that faith it is impossible that faith ever stop doing good. Faith doesn't ask whether good works are to be done, but before it is asked, it has done them. It is always active. Whoever doesn't do such works is without faith. He gropes and searches about him for faith in good works, but doesn't know what faith or good works are. Even so, he chatters on with a great many words about faith and good works. So today, all the good works that we have, it comes from heaven. Our salvation is a gift from God. We do not earn. Like, I, I've always been told, like, you know, if you, if you get what you deserve, that's justice. But, it, you know, if you don't get what you do deserve, that's grace. We are given grace. So today, listen, when I read this, every time I do this, even on Tuesdays, it don't matter, it hurts. It hurts because guess what? I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I've fallen short. Now, I could have, I thought about always like, hey, I, I could get a random act of kindness sheet, print it out there and say, hey, these are works and you can go do them. But I got a question. Is there one thing that's been on your mind? while I've been talking about one work, like, man, it could be, I, you know what, the other day, this person said, hey, add me to your prayer list. Did you just pray for him right then? It could be that. It could be that random act of kindness of paying it forward, paying behind you. It could be anything, but there's one thing that the Holy Spirit tells you and convicts you of. That's the random act of kindness. That's working, being the feet of Jesus. So instead of doing that, y'all can get on y'all's phones. I could pull up a random act of kindness list in about two minutes. But y'all can do that. But I, I, I encourage you, that one thing on your heart, do it. Uh, and you can't, can't ever go wrong. But if you would, please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for everything that you do. But Lord, thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. And thank you for your faithful love for us. Lord, thank you for the love that you put into our hearts. That way we can put it into the hearts of others. Lord, thank you for everything that you do. So, Lord, I ask today, like if there is anyone that does not know you, Lord, I pray that you convict them in mighty, mighty ways. If we alter, uh, open the altar, Lord, I pray that you give them strength and courage to step out of the boat and follow Jesus. And Lord, for all of us that have fell short and could do more works, Lord, I ask for forgiveness, Lord, and I ask for strength to continue to do mighty, mighty works in your name, Lord. And all these things I pray in Jesus' name.